Hello and welcome back. All right, so in this one we're going to cover variables and data types and why we need them and why do we even bother. <laughs> so, and I'm also going to explain everything that this means. So, if you're worried and you don't know, don't worry, I'm here, relaxed, we're going to cover everything. So, what are variables? Well, variables, you can imagine them as simple boxes that we can add different types of data in them. So, data types, right? So, we can add uh, numbers, we can add text. So a uh, real world example would be, let's, let's say we have a game, okay? And we have a life bar. Well, that life bar would be a variable that's gonna hold a number like 100 or wh however much life you need in it. So 100 and whenever you take a hit uh, and you get damaged, you just subtract a number from it. So minus 10 or something like that. So then your variable is going to update, so your box is going to update, and then the new value is going to be 90. So 90 is going to be displayed, and that means that you need to practice because you took damage and you're not great at the game, like me. All right, so how do we write a variable? Well, let's get ready. We're going to do it the old way, and then we're going to do it the new way. And I'm going to vaguely explain why we do this. So variable, how do we write one? Well var like so so variable var yeah, okay <laughs> and then we need to add a name to it so what is our box name our variable well let's say life because we use the game example and then we set it equal to which basically means that we're assigning a value to it okay so what what are we throwing in this box this is what the equal means and let's say we want a hundred so that's that's the number we want we just write a hundred simple like so and then we add this dot and this comma at the end. Now, why do we do that? Well, JavaScript doesn't really know what it does. And it basically takes out all the empty space from here. And when it runs, it's going to read everything in one line like so. So if we don't have this dot and comma, it's going to read everything together like this, which is gonna, not going to make sense in the JavaScript world. And it's going to throw a big fat error. And I'm not sure what it's going to throw, but let's see invalid unexpected token. All right. So it's just going to say, I don't know what the hell is going on here. Please fix, please fix your, your bad code. So we add this just so we know where our line ends basically. All right. And that's what we did here as well. So we're going to use this every time we finish our line of code. Now, this is a number. Cool. What else do we have? Let's say we have some, uh, let's, let's say we have our name on the screen. So in our game, well, we cannot write like David, like so, because that means absolutely nothing in the JavaScript world. So as you can see here, we added quotes which we can use here and that is text. So this is valid because there are certain words that are reserved in JavaScript. So we cannot just write var here or some things like that. That's not going to work because this is reserved. So to fix that, we can just add the quotes like so, which is going to be string. This is going to be legit. It's going to work. It's not going to have any issues. We can add numbers. We can add anything here. But the only difference between this and this is going to be that, hey, this is a number. With this number up here, we can do calculations. So we can subtract from this. We can add to this. We can divide it. We can multiply it. We can manipulate the number every way we want. But here, we cannot do that. We have different things. We can modify the text and uppercase it and add other different things to it. But we cannot play with numbers here, so we cannot subtract from this or add to this. So this is just simple, simple text. So we're going to write dev at here as my name, all right? So we have a live bar and we have a name. So what if we want to add like notes to our JavaScript? Like, let's say we just want to let people know what this is. So to do that, we can just add a slash slash, a double slash, and here we can write whatever we want. So this is not going to be read by JavaScript. This is just going to be like adding notes to your code and letting people know or yourself know why and what did you write. So here we can say, this is my life bar. This is the name displayed in the game. And also, this is a number data type. And this one is a string like so. So 
right now what we can do is actually we can delete everything we have in here and we can just add our variable like so so if we add life here and we hit save we are gonna have a hundred so rather than hard coding so rather than adding a hundred here like so we can just add life and it's gonna know that hey life is 100 or if we add name not names name it's gonna know that hey it's dev ed awesome so what, we, what can we do here well let's say we want to also modify this so let's say we get hit all right our life is gonna go down so all we can do is say life is equal to all right so I'm I'm getting the life variable and I'm changing its value again so let's say we want our life to change to 50 so now when we console log the life it's gonna be 50 but what if we wanna let's say we wanna subtract from the original number up here That's something that you're probably gonna do multiple times well what we can do is because let's say you get damaged and you get damaged more but you want it to start from this value and you want to get the value again uh, to do that we can write life again here so our life variable is going to equal to and again the value is 100 so this is going to be added dynamically in here so you don't need to write 100 minus 10 like so which is going to give us 90 like so so I know this looks kind of weird it is what it is <laughs> what you're gonna do but let's say we copy paste this it's gonna give us 80 because what's, what's happening here is we get the variable this is a hundred minus 10 it's gonna be 90 so right here our value is 90 so life is equal to 90 and then we get the life again is equal to well now it's 90 so 90 is going to be passed in here minus 10 well it's going to be 80 so that's why we get 80 here you can also do plus here you can also do divide like so and you can do multiplications like so so you can use everything basic and math and more if you want to we're not going to be going into complex algorithms but these are probably going to be enough for most things. Cool. All right. So with text, I'm going to cover later what we can do with this. But what 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 else do we have here? Well, I'm going to cover one more because these three are really probably going to be used most is something called Boolean. So what's a Boolean? Sounds funny. Why is it useful? So let's say we want to do a shopping website. And we have a checkout button right but we only want that checkout button to be available once we have a product in our basket right because if you don't have any products why are you checking out well it's just the empty box coming to your house hey maybe i don't know i I'd, I'd, I'd still be excited for that i like empty box i just like getting packages in general um but what we can do is let's say we have a checkout okay and a boolean is basically a value of true or false so false like so again this is a re reserved keyword that's why we're not using quotes either false or true so in programming language thinking you can imagine this like so so let's say if our checkout which is going to be true then we can buy the product all right but if this has a value of false then this is not gonna work all right so that's how you can imagine it it's like a switch like a turning the light on or light off if uh, the switch is on if it's true then you have light if it's false then you have no light so these kind of scenarios you can imagine like a switch type of thing um, hey again with the check like if you have a product then it's your checkout button is true it's available you can use it you can click on it you can order the product so this is a boolean and these are uh, and I'm gonna cover three more but I'm not gonna go super in-depth in them because well two of them are probably not that important but we have one called undefined which is basically every time you declare a variable and you don't add a value to it 
it's gonna be undefined. So let's say var, um, we're gonna create, let's say the box that we had, and I'm just gonna declare it like so. I'm not gonna add equal, and I'm not gonna add a value to this, like so, all right? So what's gonna happen here, JavaScript is gonna read this code and it's gonna say, oh, okay, cool, we have a variable, uh, but it doesn't have a value. So I'm gonna put it to undefined. So if we console log this box, uh, it's gonna say undefined. So that's basically what undefined is. It knows that there is a variable there, but it just doesn't have a value. There's also one called null, which we don't really use at all. But what this is gonna say is that, hey, this variable has no value, okay? It, it's a, it has a value, but it's a non-value kind of thing. It's really weird. I know it, it, it can be um, a bit hard to understand, but rather than not, ha not having a value, it has a value of nothing. <laughs> I know it, it feels like they were smoking something when they, they created JavaScript, but it, it is what it is. All right, so we have null and we have something called object as well, which I'm actually gonna cover in later tutorial. So we're not gonna be going too in depth with this and also something called symbol actually, symbol like so. But this is the old way anyways of doing, uh, of creating variables. The new way is like so. I'm gonna go super fast in this because there are just a few minor changes. So rather than having the var keyword, we have let and const. So the difference between these two is, I just write const like so, is equal to 100. And the difference is if we try to change this, so life is equal to 50, uh, the const is not gonna let us do that. So it's not gonna, it's, it's gonna give us an error. It's gonna say, hey, constant means that this value is gonna be the same. So once you declare it, you cannot change it. So that's what const is. So we cannot modify the data in here like so. It's gonna throw us an error. We can set life equal to 50. And also one more thing, which applies to the let as well, we cannot redeclare the, va the variable like so. It's gonna say, hey, this constant already exists. So this variable already exists. You cannot just make a new one with the same name. There's, we already have one. So it doesn't allow us to do that. With var, you can do that, which is really bad <laughs> because you might have, uh, let's say you might have a health bar variable and then later on in the in the code you redeclare another health bar variable which is gonna change its value of the original and it's gonna throw us a ton of different bugs and you cannot figure out what the hell is going on in your code because you redeclare the variable which is gonna basically change the original one and you're gonna have bad times so this way with the const you're gonna catch the error and everything's gonna be nice and fancy. You know that, hey, maybe I need to use another name for this type of variable. Okay, cool. Now there's another thing that applies again to let and cons, which I'm gonna cover later on, which is called scoping. So, which basically is uh, where your variables are available in your code. So right now this would be global. Uh, but again, I'm not gonna get too in depth with this. Uh, right now so the other one so if if you do want to change the value of this you can use something called let so let life equal to 100 and here we can just do the same thing that we did up here with the var and this all right box what box okay life here save so this is gonna work just fine there's no issue with this um, so if you want to create a variable and change the value of it, uh, you can use let. So that's the only difference. Const, you're going to see that it's going to be practically used uh, a lot. And let's say you want to select an image on your page. You're going to use a const because you're probably not going to change the image. You're not going to uh, take the, let, uh, the, the const image that you get from your HTML and you're not going to get the image and set it to 10 or something it's not gonna make any sense. So something that you just grab once and it's good. 
So that's that. The cat's going crazy. So it's hard for me to concentrate. I apologize. Oh, these black cats causing trouble everywhere. All right. So that's it. Hopefully it's simple. There we go. Those are variables, data types. Let's get onto part three and talk about functions. Click here.